Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lofredo, and today we are starting the Tricks for Lyrics category. Now, I know a lot of you have been waiting for the Lyrics category, so let's go to it. Uh, now, the Lyrics tool in Finale is a thing that looks like a little quill pen, and when you click on that, you usually get the Lyrics window. If the Lyrics window does not appear, just go to the Lyrics menu and choose Lyrics window or Command L will bring that back up. Now this Lyrics window can be moved wherever you need to, it can also be resized, uh, but we're going to be talking a lot about this Lyrics window today and uh, in the following videos. Now in the Lyrics window, we have six, I would call them mini tools uh, that we can use. Uh, the first one is a type and score. We have click assignment, edit word extensions, adjust syllables, shift lyrics, and clone lyrics. Uh, mostly today we're going to be talking about the type and score and a little bit about the clone lyrics as well. Some of this other stuff with verse chorus section I'm going to show you in one of the uh, subsequent videos. Now these mini tools can also be found in the lyrics menu. The second section here, uh, you'll see the six tools, although they are alphabetical <laughs> as opposed to um, in the order that they appear in the lyrics window, which is just amusing to me. Um, so they're in different orders, of course. Um, but let's talk about the type into score. Now with this lyrics window, by the way, this uh, there's an active and inactive state. You can see that it's active because the colors here are showing. Uh, I'm not sure how this works on Windows, but this is how it is on Mac. Um, if you click away from it, that becomes inactive. Uh, so when you use a type and score uh, tool, sometimes you have to click to make it inactive, and now you can click in your score to get a cursor on the note, and we can start typing in score. Now when you do this, you do have to make sure that you're in the correct layer. All of these notes are in layer one, so you can see I'm in layer one and I can click on it. Otherwise, if I'm in layer two, there's, nothing, there's no notes to click on. Um, and then once we have our cursor, it's pretty novel to type into the score. So just type the word a, uh, and the space bar will move you to the next word, or the next note rather, maze. And uh, we can also use the tab key and that will move as well. Now, Finale will not um, automatically recognize melisma, so sometimes we have to space over twice to get to the uh, the word that we need. Now, I know these are not the actual words to the song, but uh, I'm just doing this for a second. And um, uh, we can delete just as easily. Now, if your cursor is underneath a note, just press delete, and it will take you back to the previous one and highlight it. Press delete again, and it will get rid of it and give you your cursor. Delete, 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 just like that. And when we have a word highlighted, we can use the right and left arrows to get our cursor back and we can move to where we need to if we may need to make a change. Just add a D there or something and then space to the next one if we want. And of course, delete will highlight, delete, delete, delete. And sometimes with the lyrics, we need to redraw to get us back to uh, how it's supposed to look. All right, so, and obviously we can sort of, you know, if we wanted to start typing somewhere else, we just click on the note where we want to start typing. Uh, so let's type in these words the correct way, which requires the first word being amazing, uh, which is a three-syllable word, so we'll use the hyphen. Now, with the hyphen in finale, you just type the first syllable, type the hyphen, and it will move to the next note. Sometimes the hyphen will not appear right away, but usually after you do the next syllable, it will appear. There it is. Zing, again, space. That's the end of the word, so we don't use hyphen. We use space again, double space to get past the melisma. Grace space, and we can keep typing like this. Now, when you get to a point where you're about to go into a rest, Finale does not skip over rests in the Lyrics tool, so the next space I make will put me underneath the rest, which is just weird. <laughs> there are some uh, uh, rare uses for this. I actually have done this where I've needed to put a lyric under a rest, so sometimes it is handy. But oftentimes, you just have to remember that you have to double space over uh, rests. Uh, and then we can keep typing. Double space. Like, double space. Me. And it will not. It will also not skip over ties. So you can see I just press spacebar once, and I'm in the second half of that tie. You have to press it again to get to the next note. So. Finale will literally go from entry to entry with the type and score. It will not skip over melismas, rests, or ties, which is uh, somewhat annoying, but um, it is what it is. There are rare uses for that, and um, rare uses for putting a lyric under a, sp under a rest or something, so uh, it's just how it is. Um, and you'll notice that as I was typing, uh, it will add these 
uh, word extensions for me automatically, which is kind of nice. Um, it does not, however, sometimes add them when there's no space for them. Like on the word like, there should be one because it skips over a note. Uh, the only reason is that there's a minimum distance required for the uh, word extension to appear. There are some settings for this that we can, that I will talk about in a later video, but just be aware that that's the reason why you don't see it on the word like or the, z or the ing of amazing here. It just happens sometimes like that. Uh, and from here, let me just keep typing a little. I Actually, let me go down here. Um, and you'll see that when if you're typing and then you stop typing and you know click away from the uh, the cursor, you'll see that it will add that word extension until it finds a rest. So if you're sort of in, you know if your typing is incomplete, this is this is what will happen. But I just wanted to zoom in here so you can see a few things as I'm doing this, and then you can just click on there and resume typing. Now, occasionally you might need a real hyphen or, you know, a hyphen that doesn't split a word, but rather a hyphen to appear at the end of a word. And to do that, we'll press option hyphen and you'll see we'll, you'll get what, what we call a hard hyphen. Uh, actually, technically, I believe that's an N dash. Um, and we can also use option shift hyphen to get the longer version of that, which I think is called an M dash. In addition, we can use option space, which will give us a real space, you know, a space instead of, you know, the space bar will normally go to the next note, but option space will actually give you a space so you can actually add a second word. Uh, not so useful in English, but occasionally useful in foreign languages. Um, and then one more thing that we can do is a little bit more complicated, but I think this will be useful, again, with foreign languages, not so much with English, but um, uh, I don't even know ap appropriate use for this, so I'm just going to make something up. But... Um, we can we can create an ellipsis, which is that little that little um, you know half moon that goes between the the bottom of of the words uh, sometimes. So let me just show you how to do that. So the way to do this is type the first word, then type capital I, and then type the next word, and then from here arrow over with your cursor until you get next to the I. And when you hold down shift and arrow left, it will actually start highlighting and you can shift arrow right to highlight as well. So what I need to do in this case is just arrow to here, shift left to highlight just the capital I. And then in the text menu, go to font. And what we are looking for is e the engraver font set right here. And uh, after a redraw, you'll see that um, it will put the little ellipsis between the two words. And that's really the only way to do that because the ellipsis doesn't exist in normal text fonts. So uh, Finale added it in the engraver font set for us to use. It's the capital I, and then you just have to change the font just for the capital I in order to get that. All right, but let's actually type what this really is, which is lost comma, and I'm just going to finish typing here. Again, space over the rests. And let me just move over because my lyrics window is going to be in the way. Just going to finish. All right, and then once you click away, you finish with your last word extension there and you have all of your lyrics. So typing into score is uh, pretty much as simple as that. There's not a whole lot more to it. Um, I think I showed you all the tricks. Um, so let's start talking about editing the lyrics once they are there. Now, once your lyrics are here, you can click on any word or, or any note, and it will highlight the word under that. Again, I'm in the type and score tool still, right? So I've clicked that note, and I've highlighted sweet. Now, there's a bunch of things that we can do with this from the text menu here, including we can change the font uh, if we really wanted to. We could just change the font of that single word. We could also change the size just of that single word. We can change the style. So we can do all kinds of things, uh, and we can all do this all at once with the font settings. This will pull up this dialog box where you can choose the font, choose the typeface, choose the size and the style all at once if you really wanted to. And uh, so you can see how powerful this is. We can <laughs> create all kinds of um, different things with individual words, uh, sort of create ransom notes in our lyrics if we really wanted to. Um, and I should have mentioned that in the uh, text menu here, there are a few other options that are available for the lyrics. We can insert the hard spaces, which is uh, the same thing as doing the option space, insert the hard hyphen, uh, and insert symbols will bring up the symbol selection for the font set. So in case you forget something like how to type the, uh, 
copyright symbol, you can just find it here and uh, do it that way if you really need to. Um, so obviously this would be a pain in the neck if we wanted to change a whole bunch of words all at once, but um, we can do this also from the lyrics window. So if I wanted to uh, italicize all of the words Amazing Grace here, what I can do is very carefully uh, select just the words Amazing Grace from the lyrics window and choose text and italics. And you'll see that it will italicize, italicize it in the lyrics window, but also in the score. So you know, if, you're use, if you're doing this for more than one word, it's uh, much better to do it in the lyrics window. Now a couple things about editing words uh, in the score versus editing in the lyrics window. For certain types of things, like if you're going to delete a word, you know, if you, if you highlight it from the score and press delete, it will delete it and leave a space there, right? Um, in, if you do that from the lyrics window, deleting that uh, will do the same thing, but with the lyrics window options, um, if you select this first option, I don't want to get too deep into this because I don't really think this is a, a good way to do this. If you check this first option, deleting that word in the lyrics window will send all the other lyrics off to the left. So this that would be would go to the, the first beat there. Um, and uh, the same thing with uh, subsequent lyrics and scores. Shift to the right when inserting a syllable in the lyrics window. So I could also insert a word in here and all these words will shift to the right. I'm actually sort of glossing over this because it's really sort of inconsistent and part of the problem with this is that the way that ha that finale handles the lyrics between the lyrics window and the score is a little bit odd in the sense that we don't really have access to how it's doing it. W and what I mean by that is that this lyrics window uh, is just sort of a repository for the lyrics in the file. How they attach to the notes is some uh, mystery function of finale where it takes every single syllable and attaches it to a note. It doesn't even have to be in the same order in the lyrics window. There's a, a weird way that you could, uh, you know, attach one note here and then the next lyric to this note and then the next. So it gets really confusing and particularly when you get into polyphonic stuff, the lyrics are all jumbled out of order. So the whole business, you know, about you know, subsequent lyrics shifting to the right or shifting to the left, whether or not you're deleting or inserting, gets completely, you know, screwed up when, when these lyrics are all out of order. So sort of why I'm glossing over this, but I really don't recommend, um, you know, adding or deleting words from the lyrics window. Do it from the score uh, doing this method. There's another way to actually shift the lyrics, which is a little bit more reliable, which I'll show you in one of the uh, the next upcoming videos. So I'm not going to didn't want to spend too much time on that, but just uh, just so you sort of understand that. What I do want to spend a little bit of time on is the difference between clearing lyrics and deleting lyrics. Now, as I just mentioned, we can have lyrics in the lyrics window that do not exist in the, the score, right? Um, so it is possible to clear the lyrics without them actually being deleted from the file. And there's a couple things to know about this. If you actually choose with the selection tool, and go to edit clear selected items, choose none, choose lyrics, what you'll see is the lyrics will go away, except they're not deleted from the file. In the lyrics window, they still appear, right? So they're not deleted, they're cleared. The same thing happens if you actually, you know, were to select some measures and press delete, which would get rid of not only the lyrics, but also the notes. The lyrics still appear in the lyrics window. They're not deleted, they're cleared. <laughs> so you deleted the the measures of notes, but you've only cleared the lyrics, right? Um, same thing if you were to actually just delete the whole, you know, measure s stack, it will do the same thing. They, you know, the, the lyrics disappear, but they still exist in the lyrics window. So, right, so all I'm doing is clearing the lyrics. Deleting the lyrics will occur when you actually, if you're using the type and score, if you, s you know, select a word like that and press delete, not only will it delete it in the score, it will also delete it from the lyrics window. So that's a full-on delete. The lyric doesn't exist anymore. In addition, you can simply just select the entire passage here in the lyrics window and press delete, and it will obviously clear it from the score, but it will also delete it from the lyrics window. So there is sort of a, uh, a difference between clearing lyrics and deleting lyrics, and it's sort of important to know which one you're doing, because I have seen files where these lyric windows get um, overrun by old lyrics and a few things happen 
uh, when you have a situation like that. First of all, if you have a lot of lyrics, it can actually slow down the performance of finale. So uh, do sort of pay attention to what lyrics exist in this lyric window. Uh, in addition, when you have a lot of lyrics, you sometimes confound finale when you have to shift lyrics left or right uh, in certain circumstances. So, you know, just as a good practice, it, it's it's a good idea to keep this lyrics window clean. Uh, just have the lyrics that you actually really need uh, in the file. It's sort of the, the, the main uh, point of what I was trying to tell you here. And finally, I want to talk about copying and cloning lyrics because it is two separate things. So let's start with cloning lyrics, actually. And I mentioned that there is a cloning tool. It's the last one in the lyrics window, the cloning tool. Now this will this tool will act somewhat similar to copying and pasting, whereas you can select uh, a series of measures like that, and we can either drag down to uh, clone the lyrics into the alto part, or we can option click um, to uh, copy or uh, rather clone it to the tenor part. What's interesting about the clone lyric function is that you can't um, clone the lyrics on different beats. So if I tried to drag this down to the bass part and sort of trying to start it on beat one, it's not going to let me. It's going to try. It's going to add the uh, lyrics on beat three because it starts on beat three originally. So it's always going to try and find the uh, appropriate starting spot. So that's the one uh, main uh, bugaboo about cloning lyrics is that it does have to start on the same beat. But when you clone lyrics, this is the important uh, distinction: is that now uh, if you make a change to any of the lyrics, I'm going to go back to the type and score in any uh, staff here. Let's say I change the tenor line here, change the word sweet to sour. Uh, it's not only going to change it in the tenor line, it's going to change it in the soprano alto bass line as well. So again, they're cloned. So whatever changes you make, they're going to reflect that. I'm uh, just going to undo all of this. The difference between cloning and copying. So now I'm going to go back to the selection tool. And you probably know by now that you can use the filter. Edit filter, choose none. We're going to choose lyrics only. Okay. Now we can copy just the lyrics into the alto part, right? Now there's a, a small little bugaboo about this in that it won't copy the, um, the state of the italics, italicizer or any of the stylized uh, versions that you have here. So you can see that that's a, a problem off the bat. The advantage to copying is that you can actually copy off off the beat, like I tried to do before with cloning, which it wouldn't allow me. Now, you have to be careful with this because this is probably not a result that you want in this particular case, but it is possible to offset the lyrics when you do copy. Again, you can also use the option click, option click. Right Now, the big difference is that in the lyrics window now, you have four full copies of the lyrics. Right, You can see that now I have four times as many lyrics here. And when you oops zoom in and when you go to change one lyric in one part it will not be reflected in the other part so now this uh this sour this sour word here is independent of the alto tenor and bass all right it's a subtle difference but it's important because um, when you clone lyrics, you, you do have to be aware that any changes that you make in one lyric will appear in the other lyrics. Now, cloning lyrics, in my opinion, is useful in situations like I have set up here, where you have this very homophonic choral setting. So cloning lyrics is actually a great idea. It's very quickly to, quick to do this. You get the right stylization, and any change here you're going to want to have in the, the other parts anyway. I would not recommend cloning lyrics, for example, if you're using... Uh, if you're using it uh, more horizontally, in other words, you're you know copying uh, chorus one into chorus two, you know, 16 bars later or something. Cloning where lyrics can just get dangerous because if you want to make an intentional change to chorus two, you know, you'll change a word in chorus two, it will reflect in chorus one, which may not be what you want to do. So, generally speaking, for for me, I only use the clone lyrics um, vertically in this type of situation. I will use copy lyrics if I need to copy and paste lyrics from one section to a, a later section in the piece. Um, and also, copy lyrics can uh, also be preferable if you're doing some homophonic things and there's offsets of beats and stuff and you're not really sure if the you know the lyrics are going to stay exactly the same sometimes it's it's safer to just copy the lyrics as opposed to cloning the lyrics in some of those situations so uh, again just be aware of which one you're you're doing and that's really the the important part of it 
And then finally, before we go, I'm going to show you one more thing in the lyrics menu, which I think is kind of handy. You might that a lot of Finale users might not even be aware of, and that is the export lyrics function. It's a kind of neat little utility that will just basically take all of the lyrics from your lyrics window and put it in here, and then you have the option of removing the hyphens or not. And you can see that um, you know checking that or unchecking it will get you hyphens or not. And then you can either copy it to the clipboard and uh, paste it in your whatever whatever uh, program you need or save it as a text file for later. And we can also choose the lyric type, verse, chorus, or section to uh, export. If I had more of those, I, there would be more options available to me. But um, the verse, chorus, and section I will uh, talk about in the next video, actually. So uh, it will make more sense uh, soon. But anyway, so th I think that's it. I wanted to give you a uh, sort of a, a good overview of how to type into, into score, which is the main way that you're going to use lyrics in Finale. And I also gave you some bonuses about editing and deleting, clearing, and copying versus cloning. So hopefully this has been very helpful. I know it's a lot, but uh, hopefully this will be helpful to everybody. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, come back, and we will talk about the verse chorus section business in the lyrics in the next video. And so thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.